another member of the Spitfire factory team with a passion for history, his ground crew chief, Ray. Today, he's going to meet someone who did a similar job 70 years ago. We're going to meet uh, Gladys Unsworth today. Um, she's, uh, I'm not quite sure what to expect with her today because she's a female flight engineer from the Second World War. And I never even knew they existed. Their day-to-day -day job was getting those aircraft ready, getting those aircraft safe, because ultimately um, it was their responsibility to make sure that that aircraft was 100% combat ready. During World War II, over a quarter of a million women joined the Women's Auxiliary Air Force. At first, they mainly worked as clerks, orderlies and drivers. But as the war progressed, many were trained for more skilled roles. Hello, Gladys. Hello, dear. Now 93, Gladys grew up in London and was 14 when war broke out. The reason I've come here, Gladys, is the job I do, I'm lucky enough to work around Spitfires. There is something very beautiful about that aircraft in the sky. Mm. She's got to be in the sky, though. Well, that's true. Otherwise, you're wiping oil off it, aren't you? And it's not so beautiful then, is it? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> she, she's beautiful in the sky. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially when they tip it mm. so that you've got the sk clear scar behind the aircraft. Mm. Oh, she's my favourite. Is it? And they're not so beautiful when you're wiping all the, all the oil they're off They're not. Them. Gladys used every trick in the book to get the best out of the Spitfire. We were washing the underside of the spits with fuel. You were cleaning the undersides of Spitfires with fuel to make them go faster, mm. to make them more going through the air quicker. And the petrol dropped into your eyes. <laughs> they leak like a sieve, don't yeah, they? We used to say it made your eyes sparkle yeah. from when you went out at night. Yeah. They didn't even give us goggles. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I don't get goggles either. So we haven't moved on a bit. <laughs> <laughs> when Gladys was 18, the sewing factory where she worked was bombed, so she decided to join up. I went to join up to the Land Army. Right, yeah. They looked at me because I was so small <laughs> and they said no. And they took my mate, they didn't take me. So I went along and I thought, well, I'll do something. and. A Dastra house came up and I walked in. All they asked me was, have I ever mended a bike? <laughs> <laughs> and you said I yes, remember obviously. That. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, so this. you could mend a bike, so you become a flight mechanic. mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's just like that? You just, just thought, like that. I'll go and, and do I went that. home and told my mum. I have to say, Gladys, I was looking at these photos and just rifling through, it's not hard to see who you are uh, in that Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is most definitely, that's you. Yeah. And that's you, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I've got I to tell you, see. I've got to tell you, Gladys, you're a bit of a looker, actually. Oh, God, no. No, oh, God, yes, I think so. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> see how little I am yeah, compared yeah, I can. to the others. Yeah, I can. Yeah. So I'm going to take these back to my hangar, because I'm going to go and see my engineers and my fitters and my flight engineers and whatever <laughs> and say, guys, I've got to tell you, that's who used to work on the Spitfires, and I'd rather be working with someone <laughs> like that than you lot. A bunch of, they're a bunch of gorillas. They, they really are. We used to go to work with the collar and tie on. You did. So Never. that's another thing I'm going to talk to them about on Monday. You Come on, boys, went... get in a collar and tie. Gladys did. Look, look, you look great. In 1944, Gladys was posted to RAF Hawkinge in Kent, servicing planes flying missions over France and Germany. Were you doing checks? Checking that it was mechanically the sound? sound. Yes. So tyre yes. pressures, things like that? Tyre pressures, yeah. What about things like brakes and hydraulic fluid and things yeah, like that? Did yeah. you get involved in checking any of that? No, because the men used to do it. Right. But when you're saying that you were just there for the men, you know, I do, I do think you're undervaluing what you were doing. Very likely. Yeah. yeah. We shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just three miles from the coast, the base was being shelled from France. When we went to Hawkinge, mm. was 
they were shelling. Actually, I think we had a shell. We were shelled the night I was posted there. They were shelling Dover, weren't they? Yeah. Dover and Folkestone. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, a Hawkins, yeah. you're right on yeah. Folkestone there. Absolutely. So how did that feel? We were used to the bombing in London. So I suppose that was small fry then, was it? Yeah. Being shelled on the coast? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you should listen to yourself, Gladys. After the war, Gladys married an RAF engine fitter, hung up her overalls and started a family. Back at the hangar, Ray finds he is left with as many questions as answers. I think she very, very much downplayed um, her role as an aircraft mechanic. She almost sounds as if she didn't feel she, she was that important of a cog in the, in the great big... In, in the whole mechanics of the whole thing. She wasn't peeling the potatoes, she wasn't handing out cups of tea, she was working on combat aircraft. You were more important, my love, than you ever, you ever make out to be, in my mind. <laughs>